Ugaritic, and what does it have to do with the Bible and the Old Testament? The forgotten ancient Canaanite city of Ugarit was discovered in 1928 by a local farmer plowing his field. He was unaware that he accidentally came across the remains of an old seaport at its political, religious, and economic greatness around the 12th century BC. Soon, the site, called by the residents of Raz Shamra, became an important place for discoveries of a cemetery only 150 meters from the Mediterranean Sea, an ancient city of Ugarit, and a royal palace built on a trapezoid-shaped mound about 20 meters high. Ugarit was one of the significant Canaanite city-states during the second millennium BC. At first, the vaulted tombs found at the site and the painted pottery of Ugarit cemetery suggested that the ancient city was a Mycenaean colony. However, as the first texts were unearthed, deciphered, and translated, it became evident that Ugarit was a Semitic city. In the graves, they discovered Egyptian artifacts dated to the second millennium BC, including Phoenician, Mycenaean, and Cypriot items. The city was located in a large artificial mound called Ras Shamra, Ras Shamra, about 10 kilometers 6 miles north of Latakia, on the Mediterranean coast of northern Syria. Archaeological excavations since then have also uncovered ruins of temples, libraries, and private houses. The most important discovery of the French archaeologists working at the site was a collection of tablets carved with an unknown, at that time, cuneiform script. The excavations of the area revealed finds of ancient records in cuneiform script. In 1928, a Syrian farmer stumbled into a tomb near the modern Mediterranean coastal city of Latakia, which has seen some of the fighting in the Syria civil war. The tomb was part of the ancient Canaanite city of Ugarit, one of the most important cities in the Western world from about 1500 to 1200 BC, a time period that coincides with the oldest stories in the Bible. The excavation of Ugarit led not only to a revision of history but to a literal rewriting of the Bible. Archaeologists digging at Ugarit found a tablet about the size of a finger containing 30 unique characters, one for each day of the lunar month, originally formed in wet clay with a wedge-ended stick. This discovery is significant as it played a crucial role in the development of the alphabet. Although the writing instrument was the same as that used in other forms of cuneiform writing, the characters were not. Instead, each character represented a unique vocal sound and could be strung together with other characters to create words. Until this discovery, the invention of the alphabet had been attributed to the Phoenicians, who lived further down the coast and about 500 years later. Today the tablet from Ugarit containing the first alphabet is on display in the National Museum in Damascus. The Ugarit excavators also found the ruins of a temple, once visible from the Mediterranean. About 5,000 clay tablets, written in a language similar to Hebrew, told stories of the Canaanite storm god named Baal worshipped in this temple. Those tablets also told stories of Baal's father, the supreme god El, and Asherah, El's consort. Biblical scholars quickly recognized the significance of these finds. Baal was the god that the Hebrew prophets feared was seducing the people of Israel and leading them away from Yahweh, the god of the Bible. Ugaritic tales of Baal's heroic sexual activities helped put those concerns in context. And the Ugarit tablets cleared up a great Bible mystery. The English translators of the King James Bible did not know the meaning of Asherah and somehow decided to translate it as a grove, leading to incomprehensible statements about burning vessels that were made for boar and for the grove. Relying on the discoveries at Ugarit, modern translations, including the New King James Bible, simply use the name Asherah, noting that she was a Canaanite goddess. The temple of Baal can still be seen in Ugarit, along with boat anchors left by sailors grateful for steady winds and calm seas. Statues of El and Bal found among the Ugarit ruins are now in Syrian museums. And the fertility goddess Asherah again has her rightful place in the Bible. The Ugaritic texts helped reveal an entirely new mythological and religious literature, and several palatial and private libraries were found, along with archives dealing with all aspects of the city's political, social, economic, and cultural life. 
the city of Ugarit continued to be dominated by the Egyptians through 1400 BC. Soon after 1200 BC, Ugarit came to an end. During the last Bronze Age, the king of Ugarit, Amirapi, who reigned circa 1215 to 1180 BC, wrote, My father, behold, the enemy's ships came, here, my cities were burned, and they did evil things in my country. Does not my father know that all my troops and chariots are in the land of Hatti, and all my ships are in the land of Lakka? Thus, the country is abandoned itself. May my father know it the seven enemy ships that came here inflicted much damage upon us. No help arrived at Ugarit, which was burned to the ground at the end of the Bronze Age. Thank you for watching.